Welcome to Illinois Tech. My name is Matthew Bauer. I teach in the Computer Science Department and I also assist with undergraduate academic advising and I've made a short video to help you prepare for your uh, communicating with your advisor and registering for classes. So this should help, help you no matter what your major is. I'm just going to go over some channels in my IIT and some additional web pages that will help you prepare for those discussions. So the first thing, uh, you should have your IIT log, my IIT log on. And the two main channels in my IT I'm going to talk about are the registration dashboard and degree works. So you can find those two channels in your my IT. They should be on your academics tab. So again, the registration dashboard and degree works. Outside of my IT, there's a couple of pages that would be helpful. So if you just do a search on undergraduate on the IIT undergraduate bulletin. And this allows you to see all the majors and programs at IIT. So click on the, under, uh, the current bulletin, whatever the current year is, and look under programs. And you can see here's all the undergraduate programs in this first column are the bachelor's degrees. And you can find your program here. So I'm going to, for, I'm going to show you computer science. So for computer science, for now, the main uh, thing we want to look at is the sample curriculum. So all majors have a sample curriculum. Sometimes uh, it's pretty lockstep. You follow them pretty, uh, pretty accurately. Other times there's more flexibility. You can discuss with your advisor. But it's showing a recommended semester by semester curriculum for your major. Now for now we're just worried about registering for your first semester at IIT. And for computer science majors, for example, here's the suggested courses. But of course that's going to change depending on your placement tests depending on your if you have any AP credit or transfer credit or IB credit, something like that. So let's talk about those things next. If you are expecting or already have uh, completed some AP exams, again, you can just search on IIT AP credit. And there's a here's the IIT advanced placement policy. So this shows for all the AP exams, the minimum score required to earn credit, and it shows you what credit you're going to earn. There's a similar page for International Baccalaureate, for A-level exams, uh, for CAPE exams. So uh, you, you can look up what credit you should be expecting. Now with all of those, you have to make sure to have, uh, for example, for AP, you have to have College Board send those official scores to IIT. You can't self-report those scores. So either when you took the exams or uh, after the fact, you can request on the College Board website to have those official scores sent to IIT. They're usually sent to IIT uh, each year in July is usually when the scores come out and so the credit will be awarded at that time. So if you are expecting AP credit and maybe we haven't received your scores yet, you can always just communicate those exams to your advisor and what scores you have from previous year and he can help you plan your courses pending that credit. Similar for IB or, or, or A-level or CAPE. Another um, I issue is if you took uh, dual enrollment courses while you're in high school or if you're a transfer student and took courses, you need to get those official transcripts from those universities or community colleges sent to IIT undergrad admissions for evaluation. Now, some of you may already have some evaluation and I'll show you later in DegreeWorks how to look that up, uh, but you should share that uh, unofficial transcript, at least now, with your academic advisor. So uh, again, he or she can help you plan your courses for fall pending that credit being awarded. So again, official transcript goes to undergraduate admissions once your final grades are posted. An unofficial transcript or just a description of the courses you took uh, to your advisor to, to help you plan your classes. All new students also have to uh, pass a couple placement exams. Uh, there's a, a writing placement and a math placement. So if you have not yet passed a college level uh, writing, university writing course, you need to pass a writing placement. If you have not yet passed Calculus 1, you need to pass a math placement. Now some majors uh, wave out of the Calculus uh, math placement because they don't, aren't required to take Calculus 1. Again, your advisor will be able to tell you that. But at IIT, if you, uh, if you do need to take placement exams, you should find those now. Those are within your My IT. And if you go to this upper right corner and go into Blackboard, inside Blackboard is are all the information on the placement exams. So again, you can also uh, search on IIT undergraduate assessment.
and there's this page academic assessments and placement tests that'll give you all the information for uh, both the math placement and writing placement if you're a chemical engineering student there's also a uh, chemistry placement test and you know try to find this web page uh, if you are waiting on AP credit for let's say calculus it's fine to wait until July to take the math placement but if you if you're not expecting calculus one credit you should take the math placement before the summer before you come to the orientation sessions and try to get advised and registered for summer same thing for the writing placement. If you're, if you're not expecting uh, either AP or A-level or transfer credit for a university writing course, you should complete the writing placement. And this is all available through Blackboard and MyIT. So let's go back to MyIT. And again, Blackboard is in this upper corner. Uh, you can choose Blackboard. In there is where the placements are. Let's look at this degree works. So mine's going to look a little different than yours as a faculty member. So one thing you can uh, use DegreeWorks to is to look up who your advisor is. So your advisor is listed in DegreeWorks. You have an academic advisor, sometimes a secondary academic. If you're in ROTC or athletics, you'll also get additional advisors. Confirm your major. And DegreeWorks will show you all the requirements for your degree. So there's the core curriculum. That's the general education. Shows you all the requirements for that. Uh, then your major courses. This is a computer science major the uh, math and science requirements. So there's a different block for every requirement. There's also free electives in computer science. So one thing to note here is up at the top, this is showing you the student still has to complete the, the writing requirement. And if you scroll up a little bit more at the top, inside test scores here, this is we're going to show if you have completed your writing placement or completed your math placement, that will show up in the test scores there. And it'll tell you which math or writing you need to take. Now this student also already has some transfer credit. If we scroll down, you can see how here's the transfer credit shows up. Uh, they have Calc 1 and Calc 2 and a couple physics. So any of your AP credit, once it's awarded, will show up here. Or A levels or transfer credit will all show up here. So this is not showing you the semester by semester requirements, it's just showing you all the requirements and as you complete them, they're marked with the little the green checkbox. So to prepare for your advising session, you can look up your program and the recommended courses, understand what placement uh, exams you need to take, what transfer credit or AP credit you might get, and then the, the next thing is to look up possible courses to take in the fall semester by, for example, this student would say, oh, I'm going to take CS100, CS115. He already had Calc 1 and Calc 2 credit, so he would probably propose Calc 3, and then Humanities and Social Science. So there's a couple of ways to look up the actual schedule. One is in DegreeWorks. So inside DegreeWorks, we said one of the options would be CS115. So if you click on the CS115, it actually will show you the next term schedule. So it's showing you there's a whole bunch of different lecture options and a bunch of different lab options. And then uh, maybe uh, he would could look up the Calculus 3. We talked about that. There's Calculus 3. And you can see, again, there's a bunch of different options for Calculus 3. Now, it's a little hard to put together a schedule that way. So I'm going to show you a tool that's actually a student-developed tool to help uh, make it a little easier to form a schedule. So again, just uh, that's under, it's a web page called POP dot we clarify so pop dot we clarify one word we clarify dot com and again we're looking at the next term and this is a little easier way to look things up so even as you start typing I just type CS and it's showing me all the CS courses so if I want to, I'm interested in CS 100 let's look at all the sections here and you can see that there's a lecture and a whole bunch of labs usually you have to pick both a lecture and a lab for a course so I'm going to add to cart the lecture, and you can see it make a little visual. And that's on Friday at 1.50. Maybe I want the lab on Thursday at 1.50. So I click those. Now we also know we need CS115. So we can show all the sections for CS115. Now for these, again, you have to pick both a lecture and a lab. And you usually have to match the lecture faculty member with the lab faculty member. Same thing with the physics. With chemistry, you don't have to match, but with CS and physics, you have to match the lecture teacher with the lab teacher. So uh, I don't want anything too early in the morning. Maybe I'm going to try this 
I'll try this Wednesday one, it's Wednesday evening. So I'll pick the Wednesday evening one, the lecture and the lab. And you can see it's both putting it up here and it's putting it uh, in the picture, picture. One thing to note, these CRNs, that's the course registration number. That's actually the, are the numbers you need when you're actually adding the course. So let's keep going here. We know we needed a Math 251. Here's all the sections of Math 251. And if you try to add something that conflicts with another class, so let's pick one. So here, if we try to pick this one, it's going to conflict with that Friday at 150. See, you, you, that's not allowed. You can't have two classes at the same time. So I would remove that one and say, oh, maybe I want to try this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1125 in the morning. What's left is like a 200 level humanities. Again, you can go back to the, you can see there's a 200 level humanities and a social science elective. So let's go back to 200 level humanities. Here's all the 200 level humanities. There's a whole bunch available. Uh, so let's find one, maybe that's looking at the schedule here. I want to find something Tuesday, Thursday morning, maybe. So is there something, here's a Tuesday, Thursday morning. Uh, here's another one, Tuesday, Thursday morning. So you can pick one of those. Try to get a nice balanced schedule on every day of the week. Uh, if you don't like early in the morning, then try to avoid that. If you have to consider your commute, you should think about that. The last thing would be a, a social science elective. Social science electives are political science, psychology, sociology, economics. So maybe I want to try economics. So let's see all the options for, oh, there, there is only, a, that, that Econ 151, sorry, only, I know that one's only for business majors. Uh, here's the Econ 152. There's one Monday, Wednesday at 10. That'll work. You can see I put together a schedule here. It shows you all the details at the top. The, this is what you really need, uh, those CRNs. But what you should do is, I'm selecting and copying that, and maybe open up Notepad or something, and you, I'm saving that schedule, so that's something I can communicate with my advisor now. And make sure you save these CRNs. You're actually going to need those when you're adding a class. So again, it's the second way to look up. You can see that's a little easier to manipulate. So the third option to look up courses for the, your first term is using the registration dashboard. So there's a way to browse for classes, a search there where you can search for particular classes, and then the register for classes. This is after you communicate with your advisor and he's approved your courses, he will send you, he or she will send you a registration pin. That pin is what you use when you're actually going to register for classes. Again, you, you will need uh, both the registration pin and the CRNs, these course registration numbers, when you're actually going to register for classes. So hopefully that's helpful using, uh, showing you how to use some of the channels in my IT. Again, we had this uh, registration channel. We had degree works. We looked up your curriculum in the undergraduate bulletin. We looked at the advanced placement credit and then the uh, placement exams on the academic assessments and placements and the pop dot we clarify. Again, please uh, try to take a look at these materials and then communicate with your academic advisor.